Why do you think it's important to move towards things that scare you? Because on the other side of that is your growth. On the other side of that is strength. Even in going through pain, like I look at pain as a positive thing. I'm not talking about putting yourself through pain on purpose, but it's just like working out. You know, the only way you're gonna get strength in your life is if you go through that hard moment, that tough moment. I wouldn't have a story if it wasn't for the sucky times in my life. I wouldn't have a story if it wasn't for me going through my depressed moments. So realize this, just because it's a chapter, it doesn't mean it's your whole story. So for me, I just understand that it's very important to embrace pain, to go through it, because I believe the foundation of all strength is pain. The powerful thing about tunnel vision is that when you really focus on something, you really want it, it's very possible. But the thing is, a lot of people aren't willing to go through the hard times, put in the work when nobody's looking. I think I tell my son all the time, I'm like, okay, you went to track practice, but guess what? This is something that everybody does. What are you gonna do that your teammates aren't doing? Because you don't have to just be the best on your team. You gotta be the best in your city, the best in your state, one of the best in the world to be able to make it. So it's a whole different level of commitment. And that's where that championship mindset, it came to me from. I push him, but I want him to want it. I don't want him to want it because daddy wants it for him. Because to me, that's great, but if I gotta push you to do something, I'm there to support you, but if I gotta push you to do it, it means you really don't wanna do it. So this whole process, I mean, he's 10 years old, and people thought like, you know, you see kids playing at five and six, and their dad is like, you know, going super hard on their kids, and I get it, but at the end of the day, I want him to want sports. I want him to want football. Like, if you wanna be a doctor, that's fine with me, but you gotta understand, the same mindset to be successful, you can take that in any field. So you're gonna play sports for the simple fact that I know this can build you up for whatever you wanna do. It teaches you perseverance, it teaches you how to handle pressure moments, it teaches you how to work hard, the ethics of like sports is great. But at the end of the day, I'm like, Tristan, I can want you to be a superstar, but when you really want it, like when it's like when you wanna, when you wake up at 6 a.m. without me waking you up, when you say, hey, I wanna go work on routes without me telling you, that's when you'll be a beast and that's when you'll be super successful at it. When did you start wanting success in football that badly? When I was six. What drove up. that? Probably wanted to be better than my two older brothers, but what really helped me was blessed enough I was able to live across the street from a professional football player. And it made it very tangible for me. Seeing like, cause you know, you're growing up, you see these sport, your heroes as like, you know, you think they're not human. And so I was able to humanize like the dream at that moment in my life. I'm like, oh, this dude is just working hard. He's running around the block just like other people. And I got around that my uncle, he still coaches for the Chargers, but he was coaching even back then when I was a little kid. So I was blessed enough to be around it. I got to see Jerry Rice, I got to see T.O. And so it made it real for me. So I'm like, if they can do it, they breathe just like I breathe, you know, they just work hard and they just want it. And so at that moment, I realized that it's super possible but I knew I had to put in the work to actually make it a reality for me. The one thing I come back to all the time is I can't want it for you. That's right. And so the thing that haunts my dreams is how do you help people create desire? And should you? What do you think about that? Like, so there's the whole Buddhist phrase that all of suffering is born of desire, which I actually think is true. And yet I think some of the greatest joys are born of desire. And so my thing is I've gone all the way in on desire, yeah. like building desire to want something, to need it, even though objectively it, like there's really nothing to it. How do you think about want and desire? Well, the leverage that I use with my supporters is, I mean, at the end of the day, people say, Trent, you changed my life. And I'm totally against that. Like, I'm like, I didn't change your life. I'm not a life changer. I just plant seeds. Like you had to make the decision to actually apply and actually do it. But I use the leverage question of, when you get to your last day on earth, when you're sick, are you gonna look back and realize that you wasted your whole entire life settling for less, not being who you're created to be? And even with myself, like, I don't wanna look back on life like that. I don't wanna go to my grave with incompletion, so I talk to them like that. Some of you are gonna go to your grave site with incompletion. I don't know who said this quote, but they said, uh, you know, the richest place in the world is in the graveyard. And it's true because there's so many dreams, talents, and visions in there that people, for whatever reason, fear, you know, just life, they never unwrap those gifts. And when I talked to them about that, I used to actually, this might seem weird, but I used to actually go to the cemetery and I would bring one of my friends with me and um, 
I would say, bro, we walked around there, it's like, this is reality. Like, we're gonna be here. And we walked around and we looked at the tombstones. And like, death has no, you know, has no age. There were people that were three, people that were 80. And it's like, I'm gonna be here one day. And when I'm here, I wanna have a fulfilled life. I don't want people to talk about me at a funeral and makeup stuff. I want it to be like, Trent really served this world. And he really used his life, not just for himself, but to impact other people. And so I'm just, I know I go back to leverage, but I'm big on that. And that like flips the switch for me, like time is ticking. And so you either can waste your day or you can do something with it. So I have a rehab process and the first R is reality. It's facing reality. Too many people run from it. You know, my quota is you'll never win your war by running from your battles. And so you got to step up and you got to face it. I don't care what it is. It might be something in your past. It might suck to face it. For me, it was facing that my dream was over, my identity. So for somebody watching this, it might be a relationship, it might be a job, but I kept running. And the thing about it, like you can run all you want, but reality is gonna be right there when you stop and it's gonna chase you. Or even if it doesn't chase you, it's gonna be right there. You have to face it. So I really let people know that acknowledgement is power. People think if I acknowledge that I'm hurt or I need help, I need help is the most powerful thing that you can say. And I realized that in my life because immediately you have people that are gonna help you and grow your life. Exposing yourself, like in a positive way, obviously, but expose yourself. We think that we always have to be so sheltered that we have to be so strong, especially with the social media world. It's like, oh, I have to have everything together. That's like a silent depression that's gonna happen. When you suppress things like that, when you smile for the camera but die behind the scenes, which I did so well for so long in my life, you're never gonna fool the person that you see in the mirror every single day. So I've gotten really comfortable with saying, I suck at this, I need help. And literally in my business life, in my personal life, in the last year, it's been the greatest year of my life, just by asking for help and exposing my weaknesses in certain areas. We're humans, you know? I mean, everybody isn't on all the time. You know, we all have our struggles, our silent battles, as I like to call them. And instead of ignoring those silent battles, I let them out. But yes, I am a person that will tell you, make the world respect your greatness. I'm very firm on that. I'm a person that believes in myself. I'm a person that wants you because I believe that's contagious. Like, even with social media, I feel like that's what really grew my platform is people looked at my life not because of my knowledge or whatever. It's like, Trent really believes this. Like he really does, he really lives it. He really, he doesn't just talk it or type it. He lives it and that's a big thing for me. You know, I can tell people a secret, right? Be transparent, like in a real way because that creates connection. Now it's like, I can relate to that person. You know, growing up in the church, I'm gonna be real with you, Tom. Like I would watch pastors and preachers and I would be like, I could never be them because it was always perfection. I was like, I can never be them. So I just chose a different lifestyle. But now when I see people like say, you know what? I struggle with this. I struggle with addiction. Doesn't mean you're not awesome because you have addictions. Everybody has addictions. Everybody has ba battles. Some people just hide theirs better. So I relate more to that because now it becomes attainable. Now you become relatable to me and I can be like, wow, like I can still go through this. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm a human. I'm gonna have my insecurities, my flaws and I can actually grow from it. So I think we need more examples of the world of that. And that's what I just try to give people as much as I can. For me, fear is creating a known result, right? From a situation you haven't experienced yet. And so when I used to go back to football, when I would be scared to go out there and perform, I'd be like, you know what? I'm gonna drop the ball. I'm gonna miss a pass and the whole crowd of 80,000 people is gonna be like, ah. Oh. So I'm like, I'm scared now. Stage, when I'm on stage before I was speaking, what do you think I was thinking? I'm gonna freeze up again. Nobody's gonna care. All of these things, I realized that I was creating a result before I ever experienced it. And so I said, hmm, if that's the case, I need to create something better on the other side of that door. Something more empowering that's gonna force me to actually go through the door. So now when I speak, I say, you know what? I'm gonna impact at least one life. So go out there and do it. You know, when it comes to my skydiving, of course that thing was, the parachute's not gonna open, you're gonna die. Of course you're not gonna jump out of the plane. But I immediately changed that to this is gonna be the most incredible thing and also leverage where now I can use this in every area of my life because I conquered my biggest fear. So people out there that are going through fear for moments, it's kind of like this. You will never step into the ring if you're already telling yourself that you're gonna lose before the fight. You'll never do that. Like, why would you, right? So tell yourself you're gonna win. Even if you get knocked down, guess what? You're never knocked out in life until you actually tap out to your last day. So figure out that leverage point with your fear, what's gonna help you walk through the door. And then you have to just give it to the world. 
I never knew speaking was my gift until I actually went out there and failed, actually went out there and embarrassed myself. And I realized like, wow, this is what I was created to do. And I knew that because I like to put it like this, and I hope they get it that's watching this, but I've never had so much like peace in the midst of like fear. Never had so much confidence in the midst of like my weakness in that moment. And so when it comes to gifts, think about it like this, like when someone gives you a physical gift, like Christmas and your birthday, what do you do? You unwrap it, you show it to the world, you put it on Instagram. You got that same gift inside you that the world needs. And you're doing the world a disservice by leaving your gift wrapped up. Somebody needs your story. My mom told me this and I'll never forget it. She said, Trent, you're assigned to reach people. I don't know how many, but you're assigned to reach people that nobody else can reach but you. She said, everybody has that. And the more you leave your gift wrapped, those people that need your message, that need your encouragement, whatever it is, that need your talent, they're never gonna get it. And you're not gonna leave this world a better place.